All right, uh, this video is about changing some of your preferences to be a bit more helpful when you're using Photoshop. These are just my preferences. We're not gonna cover them all, but just the ones that I feel like are, yeah, worth enough to spend some time changing. You'll have your own kind of quirks that you like. The biggest one is this new thing that's appeared. It's called Rich Tooltips. Um, okay, they're kind of cool, right? Uh, you can see how they'll be amazing for new people explaining what all these tools do. They're a bit annoying eventually, you know, explaining them all. So to turn them off, uh, it's up here under uh, Photoshop CC and Preferences. If you're on a PC, it's in a slightly different place. It's under Edit. And down the bottom here is Preferences. Okay, but on my Mac, there they are. And we're going to go to the one that says Tools. And it's this one here. It says Use Rich Tooltips. I turn that off. Okay, the other ones that I like are under File Handling. And nope, not under File Handling. Let's go to Performance. And this one here, History States. By default, it's 50. I like to crank it up to 100. It just means that I'm retouching. I can go un, you know, step backwards um, at least 100 times. You could go higher, but it starts, the higher this is, the more the slower Photoshop can start running if it's trying to record all these history states. Now, if your machine is, if your laptop is one of those, like it's a hand me, hand me down, and the fans come on every time you open up, I don't know, Chrome, it's uh, probably not good to raise the history states, but mine's a pretty good laptop. Like it's maybe a year and a half old now and it was the top of the line. So it's it's pretty good. If you're using a big iMac or a new PC and you've spent some money on it, then crank this up to 100, no problem. Try it. If you find everything's running a bit sluggish, drop it down to 50. This one here helps with my paranoia. Where are you? File handling. This one here, I set to five minutes. So this is uh, auto recovery. So if Photoshop crashes, um, it will have a copy every five minutes. So you've only lost five minutes of work. By default, it's at 10. If you're finding machine running really badly, like every time you hit, like it'll just kind of, I don't notice on my machine because it is pretty fast and I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with super huge files. So I don't notice it at all. So five minutes is perfect. If you're dealing with a slow computer and a really big file, you might change this because every kind of like five minutes is going to have a little bit of a flicker while it's saving in the background. I don't find it noticeable, but, and Photoshop doesn't crash very often. So there we go. The last one in here in preferences uh, is under cursors. Now I, f what I like to do is like when you're using the tips, let's have a look and click OK. So when I'm using, say, the brush tool, you can see here the brush is represented by a giant circle. And if I go, say, me something like my eyedropper tool, you can see it's represented by the eyedropper. And knowing which end of this to use, I guess I know it's the bottom left, but I go through phases of not liking this. So I'm going to show you something that I, I do and I don't. Sometimes I turn it on and then I have to teach a class and I go back to the regular one and it doesn't seem to affect me as much. But if I was working just by myself, not having to teach and kind of resetting everything, I'd make sure I go to this one here. It says show crosshairs in the brush tip, which does this. Okay, I got my brush tool. Can you see the center of it now has a little target? It becomes uh, really useful when you've got a big brush and a nice little small brush. It adds that little extra thing. You might be like, why are you bothering then? I like it. The other thing is under cursors, same sort of place is this thing here. So instead of the eyedropper tool looking like that, it goes to precise. So it's a lot more of a, you know, I feel like that's more scientific than it is like with the other one. I'm going to switch it back just so that I don't freak people out in the rest of this course. But as soon as I'm finished, I'm going to go turn it back. Now there are plenty of other ones. We'll do uh, like speeding up Photoshop in its own little um, window. But yeah, there's tons in here and lots of them I just don't need to change. You might be more fussy than me and you can kind of work through them all. Let's click OK. Um, another kind of preference is using the crop tool. When you are using the crop tool, there's this one here people don't know you can do. So what they changed in Photoshop by default is when you crop things, right? So I crop it here and I remain it to be a PSD. If I make it bigger again, you can see it's always still there. And that can be a bit of a pain if you just want to like crop it off and go away. I just don't want you there. It's this one here that says delete cropped pixels. So I hit return now. Now I go back to crop and it's just gone forever. There's lots of times where I want that to happen. So you just got to turn that on and off. So that's the crop tool deleted crop pixels, especially if you're dealing with file sizes kind of stretching your machine out. All this extra stuff can be just there for no good reason. There can be piles of it up there. Another thing that I do when I'm working is, uh, crop this, is with the move tool is auto select. I make sure auto select is off. Okay, it's on by default and you might like that. And it's on group by default. When I'm dealing with groups, which we'll do a bit more in this course, it tries to auto select the whole group. I like to have it on layer if I'm using auto select, but most of the time I have it off. And the way I get around this is if I make a new layer, actually let's add some text. Uh, 
So I've got my name here, just cause. Okay, so I've got two layers. Instead of using auto select, okay, all I do is hold down the command key on a Mac and it changes the way that, can you see auto select comes on when I hold down the command key on a Mac? It's control key on a PC. So I have it off and when I do want it on, I hold down command and click on the background layer. You see it jump over here, click on Dan, jumps over here. So you can have a really big file and just hold in the command key and click on whatever layer you want. But when you're not, it means I can move Dan, you can see over here, without being actually on it. Okay, otherwise if auto select on, it would be moving the background. Another thing that I show you is it says show transform controls. This is pretty cool because then it just stops you having to do the um, command T or control T on a PC. Okay, they're always there. I show you that because lots of people need to turn them off because they've accidentally turned them on. That can be a handy one. Another one I'm going to show you is it's not really a preference. It's, I wasn't sure where to put it and it kind of fits in with this is let's say that you've got an image. Let's say I'm going to open up uh, another image. You found it on your machine or you're working for a client or you're freelancing somewhere and you're like, I've got an image. Are we allowed to use this image? Who owns it? Photoshop allows you to, well, some images at least, go to file and go to file info. There it is there. And allows you to kind of see things like uh, the document title, just kind of like it's metadata. It's hidden in the background. It's stuff that the author of this uh, image has added and allows me to do things like figure out who owns the copyright. If it was my own image, I could add my stuff here as well as a photographer. It's a bit slow using Photoshop. You'd use something like Lightroom or Bridge to add this data to like big groups of images. Plus it has some weird stuff like, see the camera data here? It shows me the, the cat was like, it's kind of not creepy, but it's like, I know that this photo or this photograph was taken on a Canon uh, 5D and there's a serial number. Crazy, I could actually track this down. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with that information, but see, this can be super useful if you're a photographer. It shows you things like the, the focal length, exposure, f-stops, ISO, all sorts of cool stuff. Sometimes there's more and more in here, okay? It was from Jennifer, Kingdom. Sometimes it doesn't have it, okay? So this original image here from Unsplash, do the same thing, file, uh, file info, and there's nothing in here. One of the biggest ones, I guess, is to look in here under basic and look under the copyright notice, okay? Uh, whether it is public domain, copyrighted, it might be under the Creative Commons license, which means you could use it. All right, that's enough of that, let's cancel. A couple more preferences that I like to change is in your layers panel, hit the burger menu, down the bottom here is one called panel options, and crank up this to at least a large size, like these things are tiny. I have a nice big screen, you might not have the luxury, Click OK, you can see that just more usable. You can go to the super large size. I'd probably do that uh, if I only worked on this big, I've got like a big LG 4K monitor and it's awesome, but often I'm working on the laptop that's plugged into it and they're just too big then. The reason I turn them down is just because the Photoshop courses, I like to have everything looking like yours. One other thing that's really handy in there, let's go to panel options, this one here. I don't know why this drives me mad. Add copy to layers. So normally when you duplicate a layer, you say, I want this one, duplicate them, it ends up with copy afterwards. And that's fine, but if it annoys you like it annoys me, just go and turn that off. Mm, add copy. You can add just two dance. All right, that's gonna be it for the preferences. We'll look at uh, some workflow tricks in the next video, but those are the kind of like settings, tick boxes, turn on, turn off things that I like to change. Plus we'll look in the next video how to speed up Photoshop if it's running a bit slow for you. All right, onwards.